In this movie, we'll look at the basic workflow of StyleDraw Design 7.2 and explore some of the tools that make it quick and easy to document your system layouts. So we'll begin by starting a new project. And the first thing that we see is the project dashboard and the project details page. And it's here that we can input as much or as little information about the project as we want. The project, the client, the author. Let's go straight to the drawings interface and this shows us the five drawing modules. Block schematics for showing your engineering detail and system interconnections. Rack layouts for your 19 inch enclosures. Pictorial schematics for sales presentations. Panel layouts for custom panel designs. And plan view which is a general purpose 2D CAD environment for doing floor plans and reflected ceiling plans. We'll begin with a block schematic. You don't have to start here but from experience we know that this is where most users begin and where they spend most of their time when working with Star Draw Design 7. So in the centre of the screen we have an infinitely sized drawing area and on the left we have the product browser which shows the manufacturer libraries which I, as a user, and you can see that I'm signed in here, uh, these are the manufacturers that I care about. Your product browser will look very different and you set that up through the personalization interface selecting the manufacturer libraries that you want simply by moving the manufacturers from the list on the left and there are well over 750 manufacturers available to the list of selected manufacturers on the right when you click on OK those libraries are downloaded and stored locally so to work with the system first thing we need to do is choose a manufacturer drill down into the product range that we want, choose a product and simply drag it on. So in this case we'll begin with a loudspeaker and choose a second one like so. Then we can choose an amplifier, let's say to drive it, and here we'll choose a drive core DCI 1250 and drop it in there. So in the block schematic module Symbols are shown with inputs and outputs and all of these inputs and outputs are spread across discrete layers. So like AutoCAD, StarDraw is a multi-layer drawing environment and we have layers for audio circuit paths, video, lighting, control and so forth and so on. I can use the cable tool to show my connections and the cable tool is backed up with presets. And what we're seeing here are the default cable presets that ship with StarDraw Design 7.2. You can use the cable preset editor to create your own cable presets to define color, layer, and other data stored within the cable object. So we choose the audio cable, and when I go close to an output or an input, you'll see a blue highlight that indicates that there's a connection there. And I can simply drag to set my connections between the output and the input. I can also click once to begin my connection and click on each node and when we click on a connection point the cable auto terminates and the third way of drawing a cable is just to click and drag and there we get two perpendicular segments which again auto terminate when they hit a connection point. Another feature of the cable object is rubber banding so if I move any of these products, you'll see that the cables redraw themselves to keep track with the symbol. And this saves a lot of time later on when your design gets more and more complex, as you don't have to spend a lot of time redrawing and reconnecting cables. So let's just undo those last three actions. We have unlimited undo and redo. And now we will just take a copy of this section, hold down the control key and create a dynamic copy. And in this way, it's very quick and easy to build up the system that you're documenting. If it's your preference to show bridges where cables cross each other but don't intersect, simply turn on cable bridging and these bridges are applied and redrawn automatically if you make a change to those cables. So if we click on a symbol, on the right hand side you see the properties grid and this shows information about that symbol. Things like what room is it in, its location, sale price, cost price. So what we can do here is select all of these symbols and set some attributes for them. So we'll begin by setting a room, let's say that all of these loudspeakers are in the auditorium 
and the top two can be in a location called stage left while the bottom two are in a location called stage right. And you'll see why we use these attributes later on. Cables also have attributes but cables perform a specific function in that they connect this thing to that thing and they have a start connector and an end connector and a length. So with the cable properties grid you can see these specific attributes that are specific to what a cable does. End connector, start connector, length and so on. Very important within cables are the concept of labels. So there's a special group for the start label, the middle label and the end label on a cable. And if I set a value like so. This attribute is special. It appears on the drawing so that it's easy for you to identify the cable in your drawing. However, I don't really want to have to type in every single cable label for every cable across my whole system. So instead I can use this tool, the Cable Labels tool, and this allows me to set all three cable labels in a single action. So let's put a start label and an end label. Let's say that the end label is SPK001. And because this label looks like a number, even though it has quite sophisticated formatting, I can treat it like a number and check the increment box. This means that as I select and click on each cable, I get auto incremented cable labels going SPK006, 007, and 008. From this cable information, I can export a cable schedule and this generates an Excel spreadsheet that includes all of the product information and information about the cables that connect those products. So now let's take a look at this project in a different view. I click on the dashboard tab and go back to the project dashboard. In the dashboard we have the various views onto the project. We're currently in the drawings view but now let's go to the products view. So this is a split window interface which has all of the products that I've added into my project here in the lower portion of the window and at the top we have a dynamic search tool which makes it easy to find new products to add into the project. So let's say I'm looking for a switcher. As I type in the word switcher we're getting results for all of the products that match that search string. So we see more than a hundred results so let's narrow this down. Let's say I want a matrix switcher. Okay well we still have more than a hundred results so let's say I know that the model number begins CPT and that now filters down the results to just two results and I can add one of these products into my project by double clicking and there it appears as product number seven or if I want a quantity of products I can set a quantity, click on the Add button, and there I've got three of those switches being added into the project. So you can see how easy it would be to add, for example, a hundred ceiling speakers. You can do that in a single action. Now, when we go back to the block schematic drawing, at the bottom here we have a control called the Available Symbols palette. And this shows all of the products that are in my project which aren't yet in this drawing. So as I drag these products out of the Available Symbols palette, the symbol is shown in the drawing, and when the Available Symbols palette is empty, then I know I've got all of the products in my project represented here in this drawing, and then I can move on and connect them up. Another way that we can use the Available Symbols palette is to help create a new drawing. So I'm now going to go to my Rack Layout module and create a new Rack Layout drawing and you can see that this creates a new tab here in my project. So we have the block schematic drawing and the rack layout drawing. And now in this case we have a grid which is one U high and one inch across and as I drag my products in, again they're removed from the available symbols palette and I can position my products in a rack in just a few seconds. So that's taken maybe 10 seconds to position those products. Now I can choose an enclosure, so just drilling down into the Middle Atlantic Products library, I can choose from enclosure systems, floor standing racks, we can choose a BGR, and we'll choose this rack enclosure. 
and then we can accessorize that just by choosing the rack accessories folder so we could choose for example blank panels or in this case vent panels so we drag an event copy that down copy it down again that's now completed my rack layout it's taken about 20 seconds to produce this drawing if we zoom in you can see the level of detail that's included in the library symbols every knob every switch every LED every bit of screen printing they're there in the symbols and this is just the front view of the rack so from the same 20 second drawing I also have a rear view and that flips the rack around and allows me to see all of the connectors as you would see them from the wiring side and we have a side view of the rack which gives the depth of products and we also have a layer called side view clearances and if I display that layer you can see dotted lines here that represent the minimum recommended space to allow for the longest connector that attaches to that product plus a safe bend radius of cable. So going back to the front view what we can now do is select all of these products and we'll set some further attributes. So we'll say that these are in rack or in the room called the rack room and they're in a location called rack 1. Now when we go back to the dashboard and the product view we can see that more of these attribute fields have been filled out so in fact we've completely filled out all of the room attributes and all of the location attributes even though I've only entered in I think five pieces of data by entering data in at the right time with the right selection you can save yourself a lot of time because you don't have to make repetitive data entry. Something else to notice in this view is that there are many columns of attributes here and some of these columns have got values in them but we haven't entered these values since we've entered in the products into the project so where did these cost price and sale price supplier and stock code attribute values come from well this is another element of the very important concept of personalization if we look at the product attributes tab this shows me a list of attribute names that I've defined that I can store in this file which is a spreadsheet and if we take a look at this spreadsheet it opens up Excel and we can see that in the spreadsheet we have a tab for each of the manufacturer libraries that I've installed locally we have a column for each of the attribute names and for whichever products I want to have values stored for we've entered in values into these cells and then these attribute values are inserted into the project whenever I add that particular product. Now the great thing about this is it is just Excel so you don't have to know anything about style draw to enter in these values you just have to know how to put data into Excel and the other thing is because it's Excel you can utilize all of the power of Excel so you can use calculations you can link to other spreadsheets and other data sources and then that information can be used for every project that you use that product in. In the same way that we can generate a cable schedule in Excel from the cables in this project, we can also export an equipment list which includes all of the product information as well as the attribute information related to those products and that equipment list can then be used as a quote or a bill of materials or for any other purpose. So now let's take a quick look at some of the other drawing modules and the easiest way to do that is to look at a real live project and having loaded up we can see that we have some project information in the project details page and we have five drawing tabs in this particular project. In the block schematic tab we have a completed system schematic. We began earlier with something that looks a little bit like this but this is now the rest of the system with different circuit paths on different layers in different colors we can use the layers dialog to selectively show and hide different layers so let's say I want to turn off the audio circuit path turn off the video circuit path what I've got left is the power distribution system so I could then print this off and give this to the electrical subcontractor who's pulling in the main power cable on site before I do print it off I would want to add a title block 
So with Startraw Design 7, we supply title block template files for US paper sizes and ISO paper sizes, different paper sizes and different orientations. So choose the size and orientation that you want. You can put in live information about the particular drawing. So let's say this is now for approval. And when we click on OK, the title block sizes itself, adds the live data and surrounds the drawing. Title block templates are fully customizable, so you can give your title blocks your own touch and feel. So this is a block schematic drawing, but we also have a rack layout drawing, again with front, rear, and side views. In this project, we also have a pictorial schematic drawing. So this can be generated in the same way, either dragging and dropping from the product browser or from the available symbols palette and then simply adding in these single line interconnections to show the engineering concept without necessarily the engineering detail. And this more graphical view of your system makes it very easy for a non-technical audience to understand what it is you're proposing. The fourth environment is called panel layouts. And in this environment, we can create custom metalwork for connection panels and control panels. We have in this environment a front high detail view that shows connectors and so forth and a metalworking view that shows cutouts for your connectors all drawn on a one-to-one -one scale. The final environment is called Plan View. Plan View drawings frequently start life in other applications and are often imported into Stardraw Design 7.2 either from PDF or perhaps from DXF or, as in this drawing, DWG. So this drawing began life in AutoCAD we have imported it and one of the very cool things that we can do is edit the objects that have been imported from the DWG file. So you've got complete control over the drawing without owning AutoCAD and without knowing how to use AutoCAD. The primary functionality though of course is to add our products into the plan view. So again using the available symbols palette I could simply drag in the symbol of my products. So we have two loudspeakers there. And through the symbol browser, we also make available symbols from the joint Infocom, CDA and CTA standards, the JSTD 710 standard, categorized as audio video symbols, communication symbols, control symbols, and so forth and so on. So you have access to all of these symbols directly through Stardraw Design 7.2. So this is really just a very quick overview of some of the key features of Stardraw Design 7.2. The modules like Plan View, Panel Layout, Pictorial Schematics, Rack Layouts, Block Schematic, as well as the ability to export cable schedules, equipment lists, and DWG files. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to watch other movies available through this website all about Stardraw Design 7.2. Thank you, and goodbye.